just disarmed the knife, boom, he throws that punch, boom, 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 boom. Okay, now real slow, grunting, this is high, this is low, this is high, this is low, and that's high. Just walk through it. So the whole thing slow, I told you we're gonna build. Takes him, gives it to me, boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 I just, boom, boom, I throw the punch, grunting, back fist, now low with that cross, boom, and then high, boom. Good, sweet. Got it? Questions? Just as if you would just stay right there a second, just as if you were a boxer and you just wanted to do that. So we go, but that's the same move. So when you get to here, you separate. Now the hand is on your cheek, that's your heart. Okay? So when you go high, low, high, low, high, boom. Okay, you go slow again. Yeah, high, high, low, high, low, boom. The other one, what you're doing is this, nothing wrong with it. If you go here, if you go here, you have an outside reference. Bam. If you go here, you got these. You with me? Sure. All you gotta do is do this stuff. Any one of you can do a seminar anywhere in the world. The world is dying to see this stuff. The world is dying to see. And now you you know you've got everything sweet. So it's the mechanics of the trapping that will make this stuff work for you. Alright? So give me the high, low, high, and give me the high lops out, glinting, and we're gonna do that out of the night. Question? But ironically enough, it's the most effective range. Kneeing in the balls is a an equalizer. If you're five foot four or if you're six foot four. And I come up, if somebody comes around and needs both of you in the groin, you're going to both go down equally. But if we punch you in the face, you're not going to go down equally. So the difference between 5-4 and 6-4 is a moot point when you're attacking eyes, balls, biting, when you're doing asymmetrical business. That's what this is all about. So first, the first thing you learn to do is you learn to kickbox. If you can't kickbox, you can't go pee in the tall grass with the big dogs. Okay? If you can't stop a jab or a thigh kick, pick up the piano. Okay? So rule number one, you learn to kickbox. So that's what we did. We kickboxed. I was 17 years old and these dudes were about 30. <clears throat> this was the old JKD class in a, in a big garage with a cement floor. And boy, did I get my ass kicked. Man, oh man, I'd get in there duking it out, swinging like a wild man. And Dan would look at me and every time I... Uh, he'd have this look on his face like, anyway, like he was nauseated. <laughs> one day I really took a bad one. And Dan goes, okay, let's, let's teach you something. Come on over to my house next Thursday. I'll do a private with you. We'll see if we can help you out a little bit. So I'm there, bright-eyed and pushy tail. We're in his garage. He looks at me and he says, put some, put some boxing gloves on. I put some boxing gloves. He put the chest gear on. And in those days, he had bamboo chest gear. Do you remember those old days? Bamboo, the kendo? Yeah, yeah. So I put on the bamboo chest gear. He goes, put on another one. I'm thinking, what? <laughs> <laughs> I put on another one. This is my first private lesson. Really. He goes, now hit me. Do what you do in the JKD class. And I'm thinking, I don't want to hit my seafood. I'll go a little bit light. <laughs> I'm moving around, chasing them, chasing them, chasing them. And then some fluky thing happened. When I punched him, my punch ran right into the tip of his elbow. I thought it was a fluke. Mm -hmm. The very next thing that happened to me was a Jit Chen Choi for the first in my life. He blasted me, chased me. <coughs> we didn't hit him in the face because we didn't have headgear back then. And I go right up into Bruce's wooden dummy. Slid down the dummy like a cartoon. Every day I woke up for a month, I'd stretch and my chest would <laughs> Okay, it was like, when I was driving home, I was like, oh dear God, what just happened to me? <laughs> it, was, it was like the angels were coming down to churro. <laughs> okay, I'm dying to get into the JKD class. First Tuesday night, I'm chomping at the bit. I take off the thing, I'm going to straight blast everybody's chest. Okay, and then, you know, half the dudes are looking at me like, are you going to put on some gloves? I go, no, I'm not going to hit you, I'm just going to cut your chest. <laughs> Nobody liked each other back then. <laughs> this was not like it is now. I like. I remember you from last Tuesday. Come on, I'm coming. Let's go. Love my buyer. 
dude. It was always like that. So, first guy that used to kick the shit out of me every day, Torrance Mathis. <laughs> I straight blasted him right into Dan's wooden dummy. I was like, hee <laughs> hee. I was like a kid. Okay, he's looking like, what the? And then and Dan's smiling. The next guy gets up, Alfonso Tomez. I'll never forget this. This was like yesterday. Same thing. I took a few punches on the face. I wasn't very sophisticated. Shut my But people are running backwards into walls. So I'm thinking, well, I'm Bruce Lee now. I have got to beat the two best guys in our school. Okay. Next Tuesday, I came into class and I come and there's like a huddle. I don't know how to explain it. Like 15 of them. <laughs> they're looking. And then everybody takes their gloves off. And now they're all doing it. <laughs> so now everybody's sitting here kickboxing, kickboxing, kickboxing. Say me and you kickbox each other on a Tuesday. Say today, this Tuesday, I happen to blast you. Then that means I won that Tuesday. Guaranteed. Whoever got the blast in won always. Okay? <laughs> now maybe the next Tuesday we're kickboxing. Maybe I hit you with a few jabs and boom, oh, you got the blast in. It's like the rear naked choke. Whoever gets it in, you lose, you win. Okay? So whoever got it in. So now we got a whole class full of people that are kickboxing and straight blasting. Now, do you think after about three months this ever occurred? Stand up, Ian. Move around with me like we're kickboxing. Now come in for a straight blast. Boom! We both stopped. We both thought of it at the same time. You know what I mean? Two guys. And then we would both go like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd move around a little bit. Maybe I got mine in on the... Oh, we got, maybe Ian got his in on me. He won that day. Maybe I got mine in on him. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, don't hit my but, but, but I won that day. <laughs> okay? But there's always, always, every class we'd be going... Hey, boom. Okay? So Dan... He goes, okay, now he pulls me off this side to help me out again. <laughs> and he goes, when you're stuck like this, do this. Or do this. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Tool man. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure as shit, man. Boom, boom, boom. And I got this guy by the neck and I've got this shit in grin because now I learned to trap. So, why is Wing Chun trapping effective in that case? Why? Because what happened? Why was I able to do Wing Chun in that case? Huh? Both people straight blasted at the same time. If both people don't straight blast, you're going to end up just blasting one guy and then grabbing his neck. There's no trapping. Let's say you didn't straight blast. The Gunty. I go either high, low, high to get to the neck, or I do the Gunty, lap style, boom, boom, boom to get to the neck. But either way, I get to the neck. Now, when I'm on the neck, there's only one thing you need to do here. And if you don't know how to do it, grab my neck. That's what everybody does if they've been studying Thai boxing. Okay? Now, if they've never studied Thai boxing, grab my neck. That's what they do. Okay? You want to talk about the easiest checkmate in the world? Put your head down. Boop. <laughs> That's checkmate. Okay? So, you need to know the trapping from MMA. Not just the trapping from Wing Chun. And the trapping from MMA, after we do the Wing Chun trapping, boom, 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 boom. Now, head, uh, tight clinch, please. Now, he ha he's got the center here. That means he's winning. I want the center. I want the center. And he's like, no, 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 I want it. And, I, and so it's a battle to get the center. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to start with a knife and go to the U drill. Then I want you to disarm the knife. Then I want the other disarm. Then I want a gunting. Then I want a trap. Then I want the tie clinch. And then I want the tie clinch drill. Mm -hmm. So before you put it all together, just do the drill for a while and we'll come around and help you. Keep your head back. All right. For a while and then speed it up you know but really and then now you do that 10 times your brain thinks you've done it fast 500 times okay so it'll be in there okay because you guys look good but you're a little sloppy so if you have a knife and i'm going to disarm it you can't hit the knife 
you gotta be put it right. Everything has to be precise because this is a blade. So slow it down a little. Everybody looks wonderful. <coughs> Anybody here could do a seminar at this. Okay? Anybody here. And you would be amazed. Anywhere in Europe, you would be amazed. Anywhere in America, but anywhere in the world. Australia, you name it. But this is the techniques the world wants. Okay? And you do them over and over again, nice and slow. And then when you go fast, you'll be amazed. All right, so keep up the good work. Give me about another 20 minutes. Okay? So what you got to do is you got to play this game until you got it. So what you said is 100% correct. Now I want you to look at it from the side so you can see it. Okay? If I go like this, one, two, just like a hug, he can turn his head and bite me. Okay? I want this thumb in his eye. And I want to use the bridge of his nose to push his head that way. So when this goes up to here, I stick this in his eye and I push it. And now, if you see, my hand, my forehead are on here and this is here. Okay, now I'm here with a bite. Okay, now, twist your head, pull away, do anything. Okay, now to do this right, I would be pulling guard. So your legs would be wrapped My legs would be, can I, you're a strong dude, right? You can take it. Yeah, okay, and then if he tries to body slam, I open him up. You got one. Well, okay, but the point is, how do I explain this? When someone's removing your ear, you don't do anything. <laughs> It'd be like if you put your uh, a different analogy in a vice, and you were turning it. Can you imagine the pain? You're not gonna go, sir. Would you please turn it uh, counterclockwise? You're gonna, you, you, okay. So there's no way to describe. It. When somebody grabs your eye, you get, you hold it and you scream. I've never had anybody while you're removing something think that I'm gonna do it back. But then they couldn't anyway because we're we're um, making it uninterrupted. Okay? Aren't you doing both too, taking their eye as well? Of course. And if they turn into you, they're only turning further. They're only the turning way. further. Yeah. 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 And see, this all translates to the ground. Have a seat, please. See, cross side on the ground, okay? This is cross side how I want to be. Now, there's a million cross sides. You've got this as a cross side. You have this as a cross side. You have this as a cross side, okay? But why do we like the one I just showed you? The knee goes here, and this is way off to the side. My shoulder is going to be here, okay? Come up. Pull, pull guard. No, no, really try it. Okay. Okay, now, I'm gonna bite the nose. Prevent me. Okay, well you have to have a good base. If you don't have a good base, this is bullshit. He's gonna bump you off and, you know, so you gotta know your jujitsu. I can hold down a big black belt because I have base, but I'm not as fancy with all the, tr these guys do multiple arm locks and crazy shit, and stuff I wouldn't consider doing when I could bite you. So the things you want in a jiu-jitsu is you want to be able to pass the guard. You got to pass that guard. That's a that's the bread and butter. And you got to, if you're on top, have base. And then you get the body in a position where he can't do anything uninterrupted. Anything. If he gets me in a triangle choke, first thing I do, sit up. Do you have any idea how painful that is? Oh, and when he's done screaming, ah, boom, boom. Ah. This is not jujitsu, it's combat, it's military. When I teach jujitsu to Navy SEALs, I don't teach them to take their rucksacks and their guns and their MP5s and their SIGs and dive at somebody's ankle. Brilliant military move. No, I say if you end up on the ground, here are the postures you need to get your uninterrupted bite to be able to get back to your feet. That's a different paradigm than starting off with do a takedown so you can go to the ground. How do you protect your weapon on the ground? How do you protect your sidearm? You're sitting there trying to do something, he's pulling your gun. You gotta hold your gun. Now you need your hands, okay? All right, let's do it boys, I'm good. I'd rather talk about fights I lost than teach you something, okay? You learn how to Feel fear, let it in, and not let it debilitate you. Mm -hmm. Okay? So in our journey in martial art, we start out on the physical plane. We learn how to fight. And then we say, wow, I need to train harder. I need more 
focus. I need more. So then we move to the mental train plane. So we go from physical to mental. And we come, become mentally strong. I can roll for an hour and a half. Whatever. So you become mentally strong. Not, oh, I'm tired, I'm going to quit. Okay? So we go from physical to mental in martial art. It's not just physical, it's mental too. And when you get to mental, you know what you're going to discover? Oh, if I want to win a fight, it's really emotional. So now you get into the emotional world. Just if you want to learn how to do plumbing or electrical. You learn the emotion. Read some books. Figure it out. Okay? Practice it. Until you learn how to first differentiate your emotions and then process them. If I'm mad, I'm going to tell somebody I'm mad. If I'm hurt, what's the difference between sad and hurt? Can anybody tell me? Take a guess. Rob. Okay. They're both emotional. You're hurt. Your feelings are hurt. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's say I'm driving down the street and I see a car wreck. And I feel sad for that person. Now let's say I'm driving down the street and I wreck the car. <laughs> and my friend over here dies. Well, now I'm hurt. It's so personal. It's hurt. Experience is a loss. There's a loss associated with hurt. Hurt is worse than sad if you want to... It's hard to say that. You can't really say that. But, but there's more to processing hurt than processing sad. Okay? And believe it or not, this is how you win a fight. Why do you think Michael Jordan can score 40 points and someday gets up there and misses the whole bucket? Name a football player, a basketball player, a boxer, a kickboxer, an MMA guy. And why do you think they have great days and shitty days? Does their physical change? No. Do they become more athletic Monday than they did Tuesday? No, sir. Think about it. It's all up here. What has happened in your life in the last two weeks? What is going on in your subconscious that's going to stop you from winning this fight, from turning on your killer instinct, from relaxing when you need to? Well, if your subconscious is worrying about your father who just got diagnosed with cancer, or you're worried about something, you're worried, you're worried, okay? And if you're in that world, you're not going to win a fight. And that's why you have world-class athletes that have shitty days, lousy days, okay? So in our world, we go physical, and then we go mental, and then we go emotional. Now, I'm not going to say, you know, you're done with your emotions, ta-da, it's never like that. But you get so good at them that whenever you get hurt, you learn to process it. Whenever you're sad, you process it. And pretty soon you're floating around, and you're going to get this craving become spiritual. It's no longer about you. You've worked you enough. You're always going to work you. You're not done. But now it's about somebody else. I don't have the words to tell you in my heart the greatest day that ever happened to me. The greatest day that I, every hour I think about it. When I had one child, who's the, uh, Gracie with the hand like this? Is it Higgin? Jack. Jack. Machado. I had a child with a hand like this and the foot was going this way. And I was teaching my kids class. And this poor kid, get, go, go, get rid of that. <laughs> and this poor kid never looked anybody in the eyes. And I couldn't get through to him. And I knew he was just in so much pain. I'd say throw a punch and he'd hide this hand and he'd throw a punch like this. And I dreaded coming to class because I hurt inside teaching this kid. And one day I was just pissed. I was just pissed. And some of the other kids were a little inappropriately rough. So I pulled him off for a month and I worked with this kid. We did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a month. I had him doing tie clinches, eyes, rakes. I, 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 had, I showed him that the best way to do all your hooks is with your hook hand. That became his good <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, lo and behold, he was black. 
His father and mother was over here. Father was like about that tall. Okay? I look at this dude and I go, good God, you can teach your son martial arts. You don't need me. Okay? His wife was right there. We had a group class. I said, Joan, get in the spa. I had some one guy get up. He's up like this, moving around. Whoop, whoop, takes his knife, slap, 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 choke. <laughs> and I started this, and everybody went. The dad over there, this dude, his mouth went, went like this. I go, next! Grabbed another dude, straight blast, hook, take down, choke. Another guy, straight blast. Every, and now, the kids are coming up to him. I'm like, stop talking! And then I turned around. And I saw this man that could rip me a new asshole. Broke down. And I knew lives would change. Okay? So when you work your physical and you work your mental and you work your emotional, you're going to crave spiritual. You can't get rid of your anger and not want to be spiritual. But we have something special. Because we don't just teach martial arts to folks with disabilities. We change folks' lives yeah. by making them, excuse my French, bad motherfuckers. <laughs> so they don't just go, oh, I'm having fun doing a sport. Ooh, no, no, no. I'm changing your whole life. And you're going to crave this as much as I do. And it's going to be a part of you. And then when you got that knucklehead half drunk in a bar grabbing your girlfriend's ass or something, it's like, it's a joke. You don't get mad. You don't fight over anything anymore like this. Because you worked your way up to being an involved person where martial art became an equation in your life. Not just a way to beat people up. When I see this MMA shit, you know why I hate it so much? It reminds me of me. They're drinking and they're drunk in the old days. That's what I used to be like. But I was in my 20s for Christ's sake. Okay? But that's not spirituality. These MMA cats that get drunk every night and throw lawn furniture in the pool and all that crazy stuff, they're probably good fighters, one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure they beat me up, I guess. That's not martial art. That's not going to help anybody. And it's not who we are. So with that said, I am so proud of this right here. I want you to see. I want you to see a demo. Okay? So, uh, Mike, let's pull you out here. Okay, hey, how about some tunes there, brother? No, don't sing, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried that one. Fight the way back up. Very good. And break. Good job. Okay. What we do is we try to what? Hey, hey, yeah, that's obviously that's the way to do it. So <clears throat> again, you can go to 3,000 martial arts and they're all screwing it up. You look at the brilliant jujitsu people on the ground that can beat you with their big toe and they're doing stuff with a knife that'll get them killed. So you got to stick with the experts. You don't learn knife fighting from Filipinos, I mean from Brazilians, and you don't learn, you know, ground fighting from Filipinos. <laughs> you just, you know. See it? Feel it? Put. So it's pushing. So if me and him meet, boom, are we pulling or pushing? Pushing. pushing. We're pushing on each other. Should I push back with a paw? No, you got to pull. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as we go, boom, boom, boom. So, you know, the, now, when are you going to meet here? In case both people decide to straight blast. Or, how do you counter a straight blast? With a straight blast. With a straight blast. You can't counter it any other way. Check this out. Start, start to slow me. Straight blast. If I turn like this, 
knee me in the thigh. Boom! Okay? Straight plus. If I turn the other way. Okay, let me do it to you. Turn to your right. Boom! Knee. If I straight plus, turn to your left. Boom! Knee. Turn all the way around. Right. <laughs> Duck down. Duck. Boom. Okay? So there's nothing somebody can do of all the visceral responses people do when you blast them, there's nothing someone can do right. Now, I straight blast you, you straight blast me. Oh, so we gotta meet each other. So if somebody's coming on me with a blast, I gotta come up here and occupy my center line. And now when you're both pushing, the lopsaw gets it. You got me? Yes, sir. <laughs> Different it is, yeah, how predictable it is. When you're fighting a different body type, different everything. Yeah. Okay, everything changes. So what was the score before? Yeah. Is that two? Okay, good job. Good job. That's it, right? Okay, uh, what I was doing is he's spiking, so he's, there's no dick hanging right He's spiking, he's spiking. I want, I want three people now, okay? We're gonna do whoever wants to do this. Okay, come on up. But there's no defanging, okay? We're just doing our get, get him going, get him going. Okay, and then up it a little bit after 20 seconds. Okay? So, so uh, Chris, Chris is jabbing, crossing. Hey, come on in. Still creating eclipse. See what I mean? Yeah. So nice and slow. Nice and slow. He comes in. Boom. I do the destruction. Boom. And I go. And I'm watching him. Boom. While I'm watching him, I'm doing this. And I'm shooting. Alright. And then come up. Boom. And he's coming in. Come on, come on. Yeah. Alright, let's do that. Time. See who said there's there's gonna be an opening, okay? So it's like uh, I was gonna say football, but I don't really watch football that much. But I, I come up, good take, and then he blocks it. There's the there's the pathway right here. I'm gonna pull him, okay? Shove, pull him again, and elbow. Elbow. Okay? Actually, you know what? Let's put a headbutt real quick. <laughs> boom, boom. They come up. Pull. Shove catch. Elbow. And then a headbutt. Okay? Our, our definition of a headbutt when we're in clinch, we have to have this. We don't go here. They come to our crown. Okay? They meet our crown. And, and, and for, your, for your drill partners, keep your head this way or else it's going to be a that's now, okay? So keep it, keep it this way so they, when they pull a little bit, you, you, you gotta have them, you gotta feel the energy when they pull you, okay? That, this one doesn't go down or else it's gonna be touched down. So give them a little bit of energy that this is stiff, okay? okay? All right, one more time. Good thing, he blocks it, I reach, I pull, shove, catch. One more time. Pull, shove, catch. Elbow, headbutt. Obviously, if he doesn't block it, I'm having a good day. I'm just gonna blast him, right? But he's doing. You know what he's doing? I come up. Boom, boom. While I'm here, I'm ready to pull. Boom. Okay, for the for for, for the left. I come here. 
push. I'm already ready here. Oh. One more. And then head back. Oh, oh. And then nice. ah, I'll do that again. Good finish. There we go. Sort of like you're in a washing machine. Just like. Whoop, whoop. Spar. Spar, you're good. We spar like this, okay? All right. Uh, I prefer like this. All right. But it doesn't matter. Sometimes you pick it up and you're, and you're on that uh, grip. It's all of it. Okay? So uh, we're gonna spar, and I'm, I'm, I have this. I have this grip. We're gonna spar. Okay. Basically, it gives you an, it's a non-verbal thing. It gives you an angle five. He's drilling. You. Okay, I want this energy right here. Okay, instead of uh, remember our. <laughs> I come up here and let's do this one right here. Right here. Okay. One more time. So we're sparring. And it occasionally gives you an angle bite. Like I want to bring it over here. All right. There's just a lot of things we can do here. Okay. Either we feed them. All right. Or disarm them. Let's do that real quick. Did nice and slow. I come up. All right. Lock it. So he, he gives me an angle five. I cut. I lock. And he doesn't have it anywhere to go. All right. He comes up for angle two. In this case, I, I don't do this. In this case, I, I come up here. All right. Let's do that real quick, guys. Sometimes when, when my pocket is, uh, my, my lock saw is bad, he's going to cut me. All right. Do it again. I gotta, I gotta really lock that. It's not unusual. Don't leave it open there. You lock it like this. And you, see, you know, it's not unusual. So, to alleviate that, he comes here, cut. I come up, I, I, I feel that energy right here. I come up and get that meat right there. Okay? The trajectory of my disarm, we're gonna disarm it right now, is towards an angle two. Okay? Angle one, angle two. Okay? I cut. Okay? That way, I don't wanna disarm right here. That, that, doesn't do anything, right? So I come up and he blocks it. Obviously, if he doesn't block it, I have, I'm having a good day. Okay? So with that block, I do the same thing. I, I lop side. There we go. Come on, man. Oh, I feel that energy. Oh. All right, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that one more time. Yeah. Sir. So. so he comes up. Boom, boom. Right. See that? See that meat right there? Yeah. Sir, okay. I pop, he blocks it. Okay. I lop stop. Do that again. I'm sorry. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. I forgot to disarm it. All right. Now I'm gonna let go for for drill purposes. Okay. I'm not gonna let go in real life. Course. So I'm gonna give him an angle one. Feed him an angle one, and I want uh, I want Jim to disarm it. Okay. Okay. So Sweet. what he did yeah. is. I'm almost like almost bong sao in here or yes. gum sao. And, and I, I, I'm doing an Indian burn here. Look. So, obviously, when you. If it's double bladed, it's a little bit of a risk. But most of the time, they, they want you to. They want to cut you with uh, with the forward grip right here. Right? Not not the blunt one. So, when he does that. Which one is that? Yeah, see. Oh, no, you, you're just on it. So it's gonna be safe. If it's double bladed, a little bit, a little bit of a risk, but hey, better than getting cut in the neck. Yeah. Come up here, look, feel that pressure right there. I disarm, okay, block, see. boom, boom, and he disarmed that. Alright? Let's go there for about a minute and a half. Some someone who's grounded and has a knife. Okay, so let's do go over here. <coughs> and two, and I come up here. I come. <coughs> That well, he takes me down. Good. All right, let's do that slow. No, no. Let's see. I'm, I'm on the ground already. He got me on the mount. Okay. So look what he's doing. All right, guys. <coughs> you want to do this grip? It doesn't matter. matter. Okay. All right. This is where I want to be. This is just locking up the knife. This is uh, 
just trying to take control of that blade. Obviously, remember what Paul is saying is that when you're down here, you've got the bites, you've got all your Kitabo ties available to you, right? If you're on the bottom, he has the blade, this is a bad scenario. But there's two things I want to look for. If I can get rid of this knife, I'm going to get rid of it. If I can control it and I get lucky enough to get this, I want to get it. If it's down to my side, I want to trap it. It's not a whole lot he can do with this. Where I want to pass it to is a position where I can let my body do the work to give him the knife back. Where I want to turn it into him and lay my body onto it. If, I, if this is just about wrestling with this blade, I want two hands on this blade. I want this arm wrapped or two hands on this blade. If I have this arm wrapped and I can bring it up, then two hands can bring it in. But when I have it in, I want to be able to use my entire body to push it into it. That tickles you. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So when you get to the mount, the first thing you got to do is secure that nothing else matters at this point but securing this blade. And if I, I don't want to be too far back, right? Because mm -hmm. he can feel that and he'll just oop on me over. Now he's got my hands free, his knife is free and I'm done. So I want to be up on him, but I want to secure that blade. And then I want two hands on it, bringing it around. Now I have it so I can use my whole weight to push down onto it. Questions? Can, can you do any other? <laughs> Well, if I get this, you know, like if you can't get that, you're struggling for the one hand. If I can't get this wrapped, yeah, yeah, and I'm fighting for this hand, you have both hands on it, like you had in the beginning. I'm on top. I don't want to do. I don't want to give up base and go this way. Okay. All right, now I'm. Not, you push. can feel that I'm going over. over. Right. So I want to. If I if I'm going to have to get two hands on it and it's up here and we're fighting for it, I want to secure his head then too. Now I have this hand and it's locked. That, that's a nice place to be. All right, if the only thing I have to really avoid is reaching across my body where all of my weight is going in this direction because then he comes up. Now it's his game and we're still fighting for this knife. I'm not letting go of this. So, but he's in charge because all he has to do is push his weight down. I can't hold that weight up. I'm done. Where it could have been just fighting for this blade, all he does is pull up and you can go for a bite right there too, right on the arm, bring out any of those type Yeah, you certainly could. You certainly could. Um, like I said, this is Kinematai is wide open here. Um, that, that part's a given. But if he's on top of me like he is, then I'll, he's, he's so much in control. I am not letting go of this. My only chance is to keep it from coming up. Because if it comes up, it's coming down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Give it a try. Okay. You see how the camera's not here, whatever. Right? I, I gotta go here. Higher. Go higher. Okay. Alright, let's do that, guys. Control the. Now he gets on that. Now he takes me down. Remember when, when Sifu said, when you get taken down, let's say he's the best wrestler in the world, but acquiesce to him, right? But uh, better your position by doing your high guard, spread your legs this time, all right? <laughs> and um, uh, get him in, the, in this position, okay? One of the arm here, and one here. Okay, and high guard right there, all right? So the problem is now he has the knife. He has the knife, okay? Uh, let's say you got your posture. Uh, give me a right handed one, just all these guys are right. Oh, I got like, like Jim said, we gotta control. You gotta control that knife first, okay? So, what I can do in a self-defense situation is that I gotta better, better my situation. Either he postures up a little bit, and I come up here, just like in jujitsu, that you mm -hmm. you put in that gi right here, right? Yeah. All right. It, it, it's not impossible for him to to get away from here. He can just. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, it's not that, that that too, right? Or it's not impossible for him to get away from here and, and knife me. He can just roll, take this out, yeah, and stab, right? So you only have about a few seconds, maybe a good grip, all right, to, to control that. Again, like what Jim said earlier, you got to go two on one, all right, two on one. Not, nothing fancy. You got to go two on one. So, so I'm right here. He got, he was able to get his posture, posture, and I come up here. I control that for a second. That control right there, all right, is just just in case he let go. I mean, I let go, 
and he and he stabs me. I want to. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get this defense right here a little bit right here. If maybe I can push him. Push him. All right. That. That's it. Boom. Boom. Okay. Let's get to that, and then I want to add to it, to it in a minute. Let's go to. Let's go to that. I gotta get this. Okay. And I made a mistake. He just got that out. Bam. Yeah, bam. Right. So I got. I, I got to put this. This wall right here. A little bit. Okay. Until, again, it's not impossible for him to let go. I mean, uh, to, for me to let go. All right? He, it only takes about a few seconds, especially if he's a strong guy. All right? You can just circle to the thumb and, bump, and, and I'm done. All right, so I'm, I'm creating this this posture right here until I get to here. All right? Mm -hmm. I got to swing it this way. Go. All right? And I'm, I'm pushing him here a little bit. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a modified guard here a little bit. And sometimes when, when I push back, they push back. Okay, then I sweep them with that. There you go. And you gotta keep it here. You gotta keep it here. You gotta keep it here. Just the line control. So I'm right here. Right here. Let's just say I got this one. Right here. Yeah. And then I got to here. Okay. Nice. If, if he lost his base and I'm able to get away get away from here, I'll, I'll, I'll get away and get my knife. Okay. There's no reason for me to grapple with a knife. Okay, until it's safe, maybe you can just get that. Okay, stab him a little bit. Foot stomp. Okay. Okay, once again. So I'm right here. Oh, I, I gotta control that. Okay, two on one. Bring it over here. And look. Wrap. Put in the hip. Oh, nice. Just the time control. That's good. Uh, just, yeah, this is the uneven, so be careful when you sweep them. It's a little harder. So I'm right here. Oh. Come up here. Two on one. Swing. Okay. Fix their posture here. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Some people want to do want to go for the arm bar, but I want to get away if I can get away. Okay. Maybe the my child is being abducted or whatever. You know. So I want to get away. We can definitely arm bar him from here. All right. So anyway, so he's right here. I was able to get two on one. Swing. Put in the hip. Wrap. And, and sweep. And elbow. Elbow. Right now. You guys want to do that one more time? Slow? One more time. Yeah. Can you emphasize the elbows? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what they look like when they make contact. Yeah. I got, I got, I got. We got video? Oh, right here, buddy. He's always there! Baltasar <laughs> <laughs> is You are so unbelievable. Omnipresent. <laughs> I apologize. I didn't mean to, like, where is he? <laughs> he's a little ninja. Every time I turn around, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's right, he's Camera ninja. ninja. I mean, like a pro. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll just be over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, he gives me that, and I, I gotta stop that. And I'm gonna create a little wall here. Just just for me to transition to two on one, and I swing. I gotta swing really hard, really hard. And then if you notice, if you notice, if he's a little taller, all right, I can catch him. Already, it's already wrapped. Okay. Uh, and then my my shin, uh, uh, the crook, uh, my knee has to go to the armpit, not here, to sweep. Okay. So we gotta sweep him that way. Get this arm from here. Do that again. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thing. This business called martial arts. As I said yesterday, unfortunately, in this business called martial arts, it would be like if we all owned a phone booth company. We we're all a part. We own phone booths, and then all of a sudden, cell phones came along. How well would our business be? So we have all been suffering in the martial art world when Bra Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu invaded America. And then MMA invaded America. And between MMA and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, martial artists dried up. And everybody put on their gi and start hit the ground. And they think they're MMA fighters. And now, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 years later, they're sick of it. The world's sick of it. They're sick of the, well, they're just sick of the whole thing. The sport, I don't watch MMA anymore. All the fights look the same. Jiu-Jitsu's on the ground. Show me how to really fight. Stand-up stuff, weapons, bottles, fighting, trapping, headbutts. Yeah, I feel you, bro. I feel you. You need to learn that. Okay? So, for us, 
we're in a happy time. You just got to hit it. You got to make your investments. Make an investment. Now is the time to advertise. Okay? So there are, I'm going to make a tree for you of how we make money in this art. I talked about yesterday the garage. Two days, 32 people a day. Eight, four people per hour, eight hours a day. <coughs> That's 32 people. 32 people in two days work, 64 people. Every Taekwondo school on planet Earth has 64 people or they wouldn't even be there because it takes that many just to keep the school alive, okay? So the 64 people you have are paying you $25 per class, four classes a week. So if I'm teaching four people at a time, they're paying me 25 bucks, how much am I making an hour? Four people times 25, $100 an hour, okay? So I'm not asking one guy to be, give me that much. They probably don't have the money to do that. So we can take off the financial onus on people by letting them share what we need. I need 100, I'll put four of you to do it. So that's how we do that. Now four people, $100 an hour, 32 people. So four times eight is 32. $3,200 a month. That's working Saturdays. 32 people, $100 a month. This is not Taekwondo, this is Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. Seal Team 6 technology. You, if you know and learn how a little bit about business, a little advertising, you'll get this in no time. You want to go with another 32? Because you'll fill the Saturday up. Guaranteed. Then your next 32 people is Sunday. So let's just say two days a week, you fill those two days up. That's 64 people at $100 a month. $6,400 a month. That's $72,000 a year. Just from that. That's income stream number one. Because we all train in Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, Okay, and I have connections with editors. Number two is to write articles. Number one, they pay you for articles. Number two, you get authenticity all over the planet. Number three, the whole world's writing articles and Robert Young has articles this high on his desk. And when he hears, you know, one of the PFS guys is gonna write a chicken dough article, he goes and puts it on the top. Okay? I could get your articles published, and I have. Every guy that I've had under me that I've built up to build a big name is because I've helped them build a big name. I enjoy being a springboard to help my friends get a big name and a reputation and make money. So that's number two is you write articles. Number three, any of you do an IPTP with me? Raise your hand if you ever did one. All right, what did you do? You came to my house, you dropped $2,000 on the table, and you learn, and you got an apprentice instructorship because you learned the rat, the rat system that we teach SEAL Team Six. So if you live in French Lick, Indiana, and let's say you live in Miami, Miami kind of close. Let's say up from, from from LA to Miami, and you, you'll get people flying to you where, but wherever state you're in, you'll get everybody surrounding your state to become an apprentice instructor in Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. I recommend a thousand dollars instead of two. Okay, so they're called intensive personal training programs. And once you are a full instructor, now your next occupation is not to teach students, but to make other instructors. So here you're teaching students, filling up two days a week, sixty-four hundred dollars a month, seventy-two thousand dollars a year. Next income stream, articles, another thousand bucks a month. Next income stream. IPTPs. If you have one person a month and you charge them a thousand, that's another twelve grand a year. Next income stream: seminars. Very rare do you have a martial arts school and he goes, "I'm going to get someone to bring it to do a seminar. I'm going to pick this Taekwondo guy, or Tung Sudo guy, or Tang Sudo guy, or Fu Ling Yu, or Tai Mai Shu. They're just mm -hmm. not going to do it. What they're going to do is they're going to pick the arts that are at the cutting edge: Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Jeet Kune Do, Wing Chun Trapping. These are, if we were all selling cars, these are the Ferraris, okay? Well, who knows that? This seminar right here, you could, <laughs> you could repeat this anywhere in the world. Not all of this, you don't need a tenth of the material we went through, you could repeat. So, doing seminars, I'm gonna show you how to do this to advertise properly, but I wanna cover the income streams first. Okay, so between private lessons, 
articles, intensive personal training programs, and seminars. Now over here, who gave me the book they wrote? Who was that? That's me. Yeah, I thought, okay. There's books. You make money from books. <laughs> Jeet Kune Do books especially. Somebody goes, oh, that's a new Jeet Kune Do book? I want it. I don't care who. Give it to me. To be in Jeet Kune Do and to have this NASA knowledge, it's, it's NASA, it's crazy. Bruce Lee, Dan and Asano, Hicks and Gracie, these are our teachers. Your name is descendants of the masters, not descendants of the dodos. <laughs> these are the best trainers on planet Earth, the best people on planet Earth. And I'm just a conduit. We're talking about those guys, Dan and Hickson and Bruce. So the techniques you would be teaching in the book, the seminars, the articles, are from the world-class people. That's why if you have a book and you call it Black Belt or Century, and you say, yeah, I'm a full instructor on the VUNAC, work with progressive fighting systems, I got a new book out, Jeet Kune Do, it's sold. It's sold. I guarantee you it's done already. Yes? What are you trying to take away my... my? <laughs> that's my last one, man. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then you got... Instructional, instructional DVDs. DVDs. And that's the last income stream that I'm familiar with. Okay? And what I recommend is, you know when you do that seminar? Film it, edit it, and sell it. If you do a seminar and you have your book and your DVD, and you have 30 people at the seminar and you sell 20 of them, 20 books, 20 DVDs, and the fee from the seminar, I'm gonna, if I added all this up, two days of work, six, uh, that, that's 32 people, 32 people, 64 people, that's $72,000. Now add $12,000 to that for a grand a month for um, articles. Then add another twelve thousand or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars for that. Oh, excuse me, not articles. IPTPs. Okay. The articles get you your your uh, authenticity. Okay. Then you add another grand to that for selling books, and another grand to that a month for selling videos. Okay. See, multiple income streams that go to the top that all are under the auspices of Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, Filipino martial arts, contemporary Jeet Kune Do, and, and, and the Gracies, okay? How many of you are doing all of those things? You have to, you, 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 you have to. And you'll make a hundred grand easily. I have people that have been doing it. This is an easy thing. We have a list of people that have been famous that have been under PFS. And that list is this long. And these guys have made a lot of money in their days. And they've come through us. And this includes MMA champions, you name it. And you would be amazed at how many MMA people I have that have been in fights and they're all messed up. And they're like, I'm so sick of this. I need to make some money to teach me to so I can do seminar. Okay? And I want to remind you, this is not mine. I want to remind you, that this, is, this is Bruce Lee's. Hicks and Gracie, Dan and Asano. Okay. All right. So, questions on anything? Let's name them. What's the first income stream? Four people an hour. Huh? Four, Four people an hour. Teaching private side of your garage. Because you don't have any, uh, and there's no uh, overhead with any of this. Okay. That's income stream number two is writing articles. It's not a lot of money. They give you 300 bucks an article if you write one a month. But at the end of the day, you get more money from the authenticity. Okay, next income stream. What was the third one? Book. Okay. Fourth income stream. IPTPs. Fifth income stream. Instructional DVDs. Instructional videos. Okay. You don't need to clean up the world on each of these. If you make a couple thousand dollars on a website selling instructional videos in a month, Let's see, that's 40 videos. Okay, so the secret is get these multiple income streams going. And the main thing about all of this is it's your own authenticity. That's why I built this company that can 